All right, guys. Um, uh, Kendra Miller left practice, came back out. He had a little laceration on his face or nose. Um, all good there. So uh, I thought it was a really good practice today. Highly competitive, highly spirited. Guys are working hard, competing against each other. Um, we're getting better as a team. Yeah, I know you're just blocking out the field, but any impressions on how Mike did today? Seemed like a lot of volume, a lot of body touches. Yeah, look, I thought overall, I mean, I thought I thought Mike looked good, and I think Mike's looked better and better every time he's come out here. And so, um, you know, I think he's probably getting more comfortable with where he's at. Um, and uh, it's, you know, I think we kind of knew that at some point we'd start seeing um, – what we kind of expect out of him. And uh, and I think we're seeing that more and more every day he's out here. So it's been good. Hey, D, not, not practice related, but Steve Sidwell passed. Um, good, good thoughts. Yeah, look, um, number one, I'd say, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, his family. Um, he was a tremendous defensive coach in our league, a ton of success. Um, led the Dome Patrol defense, uh, which is really the standard of defense for the New Orleans Saints. It's what we kind of aspire to be defensively. So, um, you know, it's a sad day uh, for our organization. Um, and again, our, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Dennis, what was the situation on the pick by Alante? Was that like a touchdown only situation? Or uh, no, it was just a normal move the ball situation um, I didn't I couldn't see everything that happened on that play it looked like he made a pretty nice play so uh, kind of a man coverage on on a crossing route I thought he did a really good job yeah, a bit close to getting back in the yeah we got him out here today went through a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of individual um, I expect him to be out there a little bit tomorrow in terms of the dome um, getting used to the lights and everything I don't know that we'll see him in any real uh, live action or anything like that, but uh, he's certainly getting closer to being back. Yeah, we, we didn't see Marshawn today. Anything to? No, look, no, uh, no update. Um, you know, he's got. There's nothing structurally wrong with his knee, um, and uh, it's really more or less us getting him on a little medication to help hopefully calm this thing down. Um, again, it's not a significant injury, but you know, it's one that. You got to kind of battle through a little bit. Yeah, a, a guy like Demario, how much preseason work or, or does he need to get back to where he needs to be? Yeah, I think I think I think he needs to be out here practicing, which is what he's doing. Um, I don't expect to see him in the game. Um, I think he'll be ready to go when the season opens up. With the uh, defensive front, I mean, would it be fair to say that just because of the personnel turnover, there's going to be some uncertainty. Not necessarily bad. Not necessarily bad uncertainty. You can just you know, there's basically one starter back. And how do you feel like through training camp that's kind of resolved? Yeah, look, I think uh, I think the uncertainties um, probably been answered a little bit in my in my mind. Um, I feel really comfortable with where we're at up front. We've got a lot of guys that can play in our league, uh, a lot of guys that can play at a high level. I, I expect us to be able to have a pretty good rotation in there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I feel good about where we're at from a defensive front standpoint. And with uh, Peyton in particular, um, you may just may have just been what stood out to me, but I noticed uh, like his athleticism on some of those stunts, you know, spinning and really bolting out of the backfield and stuff like that. It's, um, is he, yeah, is he look, turning a corner? Look, here's the thing with the player, all right? He, he missed a lot of time due to injury. Um, this was really the first off season that he's had where he's been able to participate fully in everything that we're doing, um, both from a physical standpoint and from a mental standpoint. Uh, and I think you're seeing some of the fruits of that labor. Um, it's hard on a young guy when a young guy misses a lot of time. Um, he's got a lot, of, a lot of catching up to do. And uh, I, think he's, I think he's had a really good camp. I like where he's at. Um, and I think he's, he'll, he'll be a player that um, you know, we're going to be able to count on this season. How much veteran leadership that Jimmy Graham shown and has shown you know, as a guy that's been around a long time? Yeah, I think I think he provides a lot of leadership for us. Um, you know, we've got some fairly young players in that tight end room. Uh, Jimmy's a guy that's been around a long time, been a part of some really good football teams. 
um, and and played the position at a high level for a long time. And so um, he understands the game. He understands what it takes to be um, both a competitive team and to play that position at a high level. So I think that's been important for us. Well, I think um, you know he's he's a he's a big, long corner, um, and and I think you know this this game a lot of times is is kind of a matchup game, and and some of the smaller players that maybe don't have as much length, uh, they can get exposed in coverage. I like I like the way he's been able to uh, you know play with his back to the ball down the field has been has been pretty good. Dennis, with the new uh, cut down day rule. Have to decide like by next Wednesday if you want to put players on, on the IR list that, yeah, that, I think that, that won't play in the first four weeks or whatever. Or? Yeah, that'll that'll happen. Um, yeah, really, most of that all happens on on Tuesday. Um, without getting into all the specifics of, of everything, um, you know, we'll make most of our roster moves on Tuesday. But that doesn't like you know. I mean, it used to be that you put a guy on IR heading into week one and you'd know he had a four week to like so with some of these guys Trey so it's play, still you it's it's still early. it's it, nothing's really changed yeah um you know for a guy to be on ir and return he's got to be on your initial 53 man roster um before you can place him on ir if you place him on ir before that point in time uh then he's not eligible to return but if you put him on next wednesday he's, he's out till Four weeks into the season, yeah. stuff. Yeah, how there. would you uh, compare maybe, I guess, different personalities be like uh, Carla and, you know, uh, Saunders compared to Nathan Shepard? We haven't heard much of Nathan Shepard. He's got you know, quite a size. He, he, he doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> he doesn't talk a lot. He just goes about his business and does his job. Colin's a little more entertaining, I guess. So uh, a lot of different personalities in that, in that room, but uh, it's been a good mix. Is there any update on Trayvon? No, he's rehabbing. And with, with that, like, at the clock, he's obviously one of his strongest skill sets. I'm just wondering from A.T. Perry and some of these other guys who are for the wide receiver spots, who, who stands out in that regard? Well, I wouldn't say pass blocking was more, I'd say more the run blocking stuff uh, has kind of been something that Traquan's uh, done pretty well for us. And we got a number of guys that can fill that role. Um, obviously, Keith Kirkwood's a guy that's kind of gone in there and done that. AT's done a nice job in that area, so um, uh, it's not really a concern of mine. Um, when, when a guy has missed an extended period of time like Bray has, does that factor into the evaluation, or is he just a guy you know enough about it? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I, I think it probably factors in a lot more um, when you're, when you're talking about a young guy or a new guy that you don't really have a lot of experience with, I don't know that it factors in quite as much, um, you know, when you have a when you have a veteran guy. And look, obviously, um, there's a lot of guys that are out here competing and trying to make the roster, you know, and, and we have to take all those things into consideration when we get to our final 53. With the current rule on the cut down timing, um, have you grown to prefer that compared to the old way where it was like in stages? Yeah, I, I, it's much better uh, this way, I believe. Um, you know, a lot of teams have rested starters in the last preseason game. Um, and so when you cut down and you're at 75 and now all of a sudden you're resting starters, it's not a lot of guys that are available to play in the last preseason game if that's, if that's what you're choosing to do. So um, having the roster still at 90, uh, gives you a lot more availability on game day uh, if you're resting guys. And Dennis, what have you seen if, if you watched any film on uh, CJ Stroud? Considering it looks like he's going to play Sunday and also he's going to play in, in the regular season. Does that help like game planning in the future? Maybe what you might see as an individual this Sunday? Yeah, um, yeah, I think some of that will, will, will be beneficial just in terms of, you know, um, being able to watch the player and how he operates, um, you know, how does he see, how does he see the defense, how does he see coverages, some of that I think can be beneficial for us, um, knowing that we're going to play those guys in the in the regular season. Um, again, like most.
preseason games. There's not a ton of game planning that goes into it. Um, you know, so, um, you know, we're not necessarily trying to attack Houston's offense or attack Houston's defense. There's, there's a few, th I mean, obviously we look at the tape and we'll make a few little adjustments and, and uh, tweaks to what we do, but, you know, a lot of it will be base stuff. So you, you mentioned the practical reasons for liking the 90 through the, through the last exhibition. I was, uh, I just thought it was interesting that you mentioned that and not the extended evaluation period for some of the guys. Is that just not as big of a deal in this case, or? Well, yeah. I mean, look, you're getting another opportunity to, to watch these guys play, um, and those are going to be the guys that are primarily playing in the, you know, final preseason game. So. Yeah, there's an extended evaluation that goes along with that. It gives us a little extra time to try to figure out, you know, exactly who we want on our 53. Um, and so, look, we'll go through this game. We'll see where we're at from a health standpoint. We'll see where we're at from a number standpoint. Um, and then we'll pick the best 53 for our team. That um, you were, he was asking about you guys seeing C.J. Stroud. You don't have a ton of history of playing preseason games against teams you play in the regular season. I think this was going to be the first time you did joint practices against a team. Do you weigh that? Like, are they, are they yeah, gathering th too yeah, much information look, if we look, do that? I, it's, always a, it's always a consideration. Both teams are in the same boat. Right. You know, so, um, you know, they're going to get an evaluation of us. We're going to get an evaluation of them. I don't know that there's a significant advantage gained either way. Yeah. Um, so we just go play the games, how they come out. Was, was that sort of just like an old old school rule not to do it? And then you think about it and it's not really that big of a deal? Or, or some people yeah, really look, like when, to avoid when, that? When, when, when D'Amico and I talked about you know practicing together, that was one of the things that we, we kind of talked about. And both of us were comfortable with potentially working against each other. So um, I don't see it as a big issue. Would, would, um, had you done two teams practicing joint practices, if it had been in here, because of the heat, as opposed to two fields outside, would that have been difficult? I don't know yeah, well, you we would have had to change a few things up, but uh, you know, our intention was to practice outside uh, today against those guys, and then tomorrow we'd be in the dome against them. So, um, but you know, you have contingency plans. You know, here in New Orleans, you know, you never know when you're going to get one of these thunderstorms. So, we had a plan either way. All right, thanks. Thank you, Dennis.